My dear friends, this is Dr. Rajiv Dhan, your ENT faculty with doctorials, and this session is about the FMG questions asked in January 2023 session in ENT. A lot of questions were asked, and many interesting questions were asked in ENT. Let us discuss them one by one. The first question was about the anatomy of the external nose. How much is the cartilaginous part, and how much is the bony part? And if you remember, we have discussed it amply in the app also and in the classes also that the External nose is designed by the four paired structures. And the one important thing is this one is nasal bone. And after that, the remaining part is the cartilage. If you remember the class also, the app also, this is nasal bone area. Then we got the upper lateral cartilages, lower lateral cartilages, and then the lesser alar or sesamoid cartilages was discussed in the class. I'm sure you would be remembering this picture also. And it's very clear that the upper one third, this much part, of course, is the bony part, and the lower two third is the cartilaginous part. Okay, and this was I have taken few you know snippets from the class notes or the app notes, and you will be remembering this picture. So the answer of this question will be, of course, the nasal design externally is actually the one third is the bone and two third is the cartilage. And answer of this question is A. Okay, very simple question, very scorable question also. The second question, which was again expected about angiofibroma. Now, all these questions have been taken by, you know, the recall created by the students. So maybe there is some, you know, uh, choices, maybe, you know, here and there, the statement. Some people said there was one question of angiofibroma. Some people said there were two questions of angiofibroma. But, you know, a young boy with nasal bleeding is 100% angiofibroma question. We discussed it a number of times in the app and the class also. Now, first question was about the 16-year-old male and history of profuse epistaxis in recurrent episodes. And what is the best management plan for this patient? We do not take biopsy. Biopsy is contraindicated uh, in this tumor because, you know, angiofibroma is a highly vascular tumor. Of course, FNAC is also prohibited. We do not do any, you know, cytological investigation also. We do not touch it with the instruments. We do not digitally palpate also in Jephabroma because this is highly vascular tumor. Now, the question is CT or CCT. The answer to this question is, of course, D, highly vascular, you know, tumor. I think you will go for contrast and CT. And I'm sure you'll be remembering this picture from your notes again that NJ fibroma, the CCT shows Hallman Miller sign or Andrel sign. And there's a picture we also discussed in the class. The, the another question of endothelium which people say has been asked: What is the treatment, uh, you know, approach for the juvenile nasopharyngeal endothelium patient? And of course, surgery is the treatment of choice. It's a benign tumor of the nasopharynx. It is the most common benign tumor of nasopharynx. Surgery is the primary modality of treatment. So, the answer to this question is C. And I'm sure you're remembering this part of your notes. The treatment is the surgery. Can you see what, one page of angiofibroma generated, you know, two question possibly. Some people say one question, some two question, but for the future, just keep in mind the CCT and of course, you know, the treatment approach is best one is surgery for this case. Now, again, we discussed this coin story in the class that, you know, child has come in the emergency. There is some difficulty in swallowing. The x-ray has been done, you know, for localizing the x-ray, you know, position of the coin, whether in the esophagus or trachea. We had discussed this, you know, model, which I showed you in the app, also in the class, also a very greedy piggy bandage. And if you remember, this is, of course, the uh, trachea and this is the esophagus. Okay. And when the coin goes to esophagus like this, this coin is going to the esophagus. So from the front x-ray, from the anterior posterior view, you will see the full coin, full coin. So this is the, you know, full coin is visible on the front x-ray. If you remember the 3F story, if full coin is visible on the front x-ray, then the foreign body is in the food pile. Food pile. Remember the 3F rule within the class also? If full coin is visible on front x-ray, which is this one, then the coin is in the food pipe and the patient is presented in the emergency. There is history of difficulty in swallowing. Both x-rays are given, the AP view and the lateral view. And if the AP view is showing the full, you know, coin, it's of course the foreign body is in the esophagus. So we must be doing the esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body. There is no need of doing any hemorrhage maneuver or tracheostomy. These are for the airway foreign bodies. 
of course bronchoscopy is for the bronchial foreign body so very straight forward question very expected question okay now next question again which nerve flies the larynx above the vocal cord so above the vocal cord is the supraglottic area and i'm sure you'll be remembering we discussed in the class also this is uh, again you know a snippet from the notes of the app and the class that sensory nerve fly of larynx the supraglot is played by internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve above the vocal cord internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve and we discussed in the pharynx also one more time the internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve also called internal laryngeal nerve it gives sensory supply to supraglottis supraglottis so what is the answer to this question the answer to this question is internal branch of superior laryngeal nerve or internal laryngeal nerve look at this one so what is the answer of this question now the answer to this question is a internal laryngeal nerve am i clear fine wonderful now all these questions were expected if you know a beautiful question again i told you radiology of sinus is always asked in f in f uh, fmg exam neat pg examination so they showed you one you know structure this is of course o orbit and below the orbit is which sinus is m m is what maxillary sinus time and again we discussed in the class also so i'm sure everybody would have marked the right answer with this question what is the identified structure over here with the arrow is the maxillary sinus so beautiful question expected question okay now again now now let us tell the seventh question now 35 year old female takes a tablet of aspirin for her headache later she presents with wheezing and breathlessness okay i think everybody would agree with this that you know already they are pointing towards which tried semtel tried remember semtel tried there is a allergy to aspirin or anesthetics there is asthma and there is of course the nasal polyp in this now what these symptom are mostly associated with which of the following now guys this is not extrinsic asthma this asthma is intrinsic extrinsic means something being you know aggravated by some environmental agent like pollen etc and the if you read the you know mechanism behind the symptoms tried at a deeper level cellular level it's not ig related it's something related to prostaglandins actually so ig release is not behind it so it's not a drug interaction also because no, only one drug has been taken drug aspirin actually so of course the answer will be nasal polyp a beautiful question expected question time and again discussed in the class in the app in the tnds in the expected question on the doc app also the symptoms tried story actually so the answer is nasal polyp actually okay fine now now i always tell you in the paper you have to walk 20% extra apart from you know whatever you know now csf atoria from the ear csf is coming we we read csf rhinorrhea from nose atoria not from ear now csf atoria can be seen in which of the following entity actually fracture in roof of nose of course not because that will lead to csf rhinorrhea traumatic rupture of ear drum cannot lead to csf leak csf will only leak when there is some fracture around the you know bone which is actually housing the ear which is temporal bone okay so it cannot be due to penetrating into the eye also okay uh, oh, there is no possibility of that but if you remember betel sign now betel sign is seen in temporal bone fracture remember this again a snippet of the you know notes in the class betel sign is a feature of temporal bone or skull based fractures and you know temporal bone is the house of the ear when temporal bone can get fracture which shows the betel sign there can be a possibility of csf atoria and my dear friends i really trust you know you guys fmgs are really really you know like they are brainy people if they think about you know 20% shift in the you know question here and there they can you know crack these question also and i'm sure lot of you would have cracked this question that csf atoria from ear leak can only happen in in the fracture of temporal bone because temporal bone is the house of the ear and just above the temporal bone is of course the brain temporal lobe of the brain covered by dura so any fracture of the temporal bone which also gives the betel sign can be associated with the csf atoria so i'm sure you are clear about this question csf atoria will be seen with in association with which clinical entity will be betel sign okay fine again very good question we discussed the staging of the laryngeal cancer in the app in the class that which of the following describes the laryngeal cancer stage t1b t1b if you remember we this is again a snippet of the you know our notes of the ent now please see the 
tumor stadium will arrange cancer. T1, one structural wall. T2, more than one. T3, vocal cord is fixed. I told you, this is the MCQ we said we can come. You know, T3, vocal cord fixed means T3. Okay. Now, he's asking T1B. Now, a little bit of, you know, like presence of mind would be required. Please see. Now, it cannot be C choice. Fixed vocal cord is T3. It cannot be this choice. Fixed vocal cord is T3. Now, either it can be B or it can be D. Okay. Now, T1B. Can you imagine T1? One structure involved. One type of structure. If one vocal cord is involved, T1A. If both vocal cord is involved, T1B. So, the answer is both vocal cord involved and mobile. B is the answer. You know, how we solve the MCQ by excluding. So, it cannot be A. It cannot be C. Because fixed vocal cord, T3. So, we are actually having two choices now. Either it is B or D. Now, the answer is B. Why? T1. One vocal cord involved, T1A. Both cord involved, T1B. So, the answer is B. Okay. I hope a lot of you have answered this question, you know, by presence of mind, by knowledge, because everybody would be remembering this for sure. The T3 was vocal cord fixed actually. And T1, one structure involved. So, I think T1A will be one vocal cord. T1B will be both vocal cord. Famous question. A patient, teacher by profession, presented to the clinic with complaint of hoarseness of voice. What is the possible diagnosis in this patient? Wow, wonderful question. So, you know, teacher, you know, teacher, remember this, you know, you're part of the notes. Vocal nodules are also called teacher's nodules. So, if a teacher is presenting to you with hoarseness of voice, I'm sure you will keep the possibility of vocal nodule in mind. And I'm sure each one of you would have cracked this question. Amply discussed in the class, vocal nodule, which is also called singer's nodule, teacher's nodule. They are at the junction of anterior one-third and posterior two-third, and they are bilateral. They are bilateral. Beautiful expected question. A lot of expected question in ENT again and this time. So guys, let's discuss the 11th question now. Again, very expected question. A female patient with something pulsating in the ear is a question of glomus actually. Again, 37-year-old female came to the you know uh, doctor with the complaint of decrease in hearing and pulsatile tinnitus. I think two points are there. Female patient with pulsatile tinnitus. I'm already making my mind about the glomus thing. And there is a conductive hearing loss. Rene is negative in conductive hearing loss. And I always tell you, they give all this some extra finding because you know, they want to make the question look more clinical, more ornamental. So, but we know a female patient is something pulsating in the middle ear. And they, they have also given one more clue that there was a reddish mass behind the tympanic membrane. So, it has to be a glomus. So, either it can be glomus jugular or glomus tympanicum. If you discuss, if you see in the class on the app, we discuss. You know, glomus jugular, one variant of that is glomus tympanicum. We discussed in the class also. If the similar type of tumor arises from the... Uh, you know, promontory of the middle ear, it's called glomus tympanicum. At least glomus word was always there. I hope each one of you has scored this question because this question we have discussed in the expected question, the previous year question series, in the doc channel, YouTube videos, in the app also, in every class also, that if a male patient with epistaxis is angiofibroma, that also came. A female patient with pulsating thing in the ear is again glomus question. What a beautiful question. And I'm sure you would have really scored it correctly. And I hope you remember the art of solving MCQs that, you know, when the characteristic things are given and they have given some, you know, additional finding like hearing loss, renal negative, conductive hearing loss, it's okay. But I know my logic over here. So the, the, the most important thing is, now, FMG students understand this thing that if they are conceptually clear about things, they would not be confused by the length and breadth of the question also. So that's why attending the regular classes, attending the full app, you know, videos, you know, reading all the notes is getting more and more important with each passing session and FMG examination. And the most beautiful thing about the FMGs, you know, is that there is a lot of dedication towards learning now. And I'm sure that would have converted to marks over such type of questions in the exam. Now again, you know, clinical thinking, uh, the patient is uh, in the ICU, the patient is, uh, you know, uh, like on the ventilator. Now you want to switch the patient from the ventilator to the tracheostomy. In ICU patient, if you want to do tracheostomy, you know, ICU patients are generally, you know, like uh, uh, unconscious patient in the coma or in the such kind of state they are there. So you would not want any aspiration. So what is the best tracheostomy tube for this kind of patient? So you cannot afford an aspiration. It's of course, there will be the need of the cuff. 
and as we discussed in the class also there are two type of the tube of course the pvc tubes and the metallic tubes in the pvc tubes you know they can be uncuffed or cuffed cuffed are better because cuff decrease the aspiration okay okay the other one the metallic tube so they asked which is the better tube is it metallic tube no metallic tubes are not mostly we use the you know the portex or the pvc tubes and the cuff tracheostomy tube which are the pvc tubes are the better tubes okay find the called puff the pvc or the portex tube but the, the best tracheostomy tube for an icu patient would be that one which will have a cuff around the the tube because we don't want any aspiration and we want an absolute seal of the trachea so that no air leak happens in if the patient is on the ventilator also okay the answer is cuff tracheostomy tube now this is again you from your notes only and i'm sure each one you know this is what the, the importance of attending the you know regular classes full app video is that you know the essence of the topic in totality and in clinical scenario think about it and you say oh cuff is better and you score that mark very good okay now rinkes edema so they did not tell what rinkes edema is so they ask you a rinke edema patient will have which kind of you know uh, clinical symptomatology and if you remember rinke edema is the edema of the rinke space this is a short from the notes again and rinke space is a sub epithelial loose connective tissue in the vocal cord and edema of that space is called a rinke edema which is common in smokers and if vocal cord are involved the main problem is the voice problem so the answer to this question will be dysphonia dysphonia there's no dysphagia it's not a problem of the food passage it is some edema of the vocal cord and the edema of the rinke space which is the space below the vocal cord mucosa is uh, actually going to cause the voice problem uh, and that the answer to this question will be dysphonia wonderful you know question and i'm sure each one of you would have scored this question also i'm glad a lot of questions were there which were discussed in the class again and again in the class test in the app in the youtube videos etc okay fine lacrimal sac if you remember in the class also I always told where is your lacrimal gland i asked you to touch the laterally over here and where is the lacrimal sac on the medial wall okay so that's what they asked i think we discussed one question also in the in the test and discussion in the classes also that where i told you like where is the lacrimal gland here there is a lacrimal sac here which is this wall of the orbit medial wall of the orbit so lacrimal sac will be found on the medial wall of the orbit okay perfect now this is next question bell's palsy time and again we discuss in the class bell's palsy is a lower motor neuron facial paralysis bell's palsy forehead muscles are can you remember these do you remember these notes of your you know forehead muscles are also involved we fill in the blank also in the class also so forehead muscles are some one complete half of face is paralyzed if you remember bell's palsy is a lower motor neuron paralysis so in in this the same side whole face will be paralyzed so beautiful question bell's palsy is mostly unilateral bell's palsy is idiopathic sudden onset lower motor neuron facial palsy and if you remember the app and the class you will be remembering we discussed it number of time forehead muscles are also involved so it means that one complete half of the face is in paralyzed in this and that too on the same side because it is low motor neuron facial paralysis so wonderful question d is the answer i hope everybody scored you know this question also correctly then one question they take took you to the you know the justin bieber story and you know the patient painful vascular external ear with facial nerve paralysis of course it's a case of ramsden hunt syndrome ramsden syndrome either it can be a or b you know ramsden syndrome is due to varicella zoster you know virus reactivation and you know the chicken pox virus is known to you know lie in some ganglia so you know the, it cannot be basal ganglia the basal ganglia is the part of the central nervous system and you know the the chicken pox virus lies in the peripheral system actually so it is it's the ganglion in the facial nerve so how to really you know interpret if you remember facial nerve has got two genu remember in the class also i told you you know first genu second genu genu not janu you remember first genu second so the answer to this question is a the ramsden syndrome with the genu coated ganglion involvement okay so i know justin bieber story i you know justin bieber story so ramsden syndrome and there is painful vesicles also facial nerve paralysis also we know it's a varicella zoster virus reactivation and this virus is lying on the in the peripheral nerves and it cannot be basal ganglia because basal ganglia is a part of the you know central nervous system 
and the answer will be A because geniculate ganglion lies in the first genu of the facial nerve and genu word you'll be remembering for sure in the facial nerve and there is a facial nerve paralysis. So something related to facial nerve has to be there. So answer is A. Okay, fine. The answer of this question is A. And this, you remember this snippet of the notes with the Ramstein syndrome, you know, like there's a painful vesicles in the external ear and there's a facial nerve paralysis over there. Okay, fine. Why I'm telling you, you know, I'm showing you the, you know, snippets of the class notes and all that. Not that, you know, we taught you well. I'm saying that you guys know a lot. You guys know a lot. Trust yourself. You know, you are, you are reading things. You are understanding things. You are clinically orienting things. You also, also. And the question also coming out of those kind of things. And my dear FMD friend, have faith in yourself. You are doing tremendously well. I know there's a big, big challenge actually due to the exam pattern. I understand that. But still... You know, you know, in, by the type of you know, effort you have made to understand the subject, you know, with the presence of mind in the paper, I hope you would have applied. You would, would have scored a lot of these questions over there. Again, mucromycosis was expected question and which is the least possible cause. That's how they, you know, make the question. Now, it's a common sense. You know, you know, we said that the uh, mucromycosis in the class, we said that we seen in three group of patients, HIV positive patient, that young diabetic patients or the COVID-19 patient on the steroids and all that. I know uncontrolled diabetes is a factor. Yes. Neutropenia means immunosuppression. Yes. Steroids cause immunosuppression. Yes. But broad spectrum antibiotic has got no significant association with mucromycosis. So answer this question is B. And I'm 100% I'm sure all of you would have scored this answer correctly. Utricle sacul, you know, again the same question asked in the test and discussion also. The utricle sacul, if you remember this part of your notes, Peter, if you remember this one, you know, parts of the inner ear, there are three part cochlea, utricle sacul, sensor canal, and this is the picture from the notes itself. Utricle sacul is meant for linear balance, linear balance. So that's what this question is asked over here. So, what is the function of utricle sacule for, for this particular thing will be of course linear motion or linear balance okay and the canals are meant for angular balance you know you're very 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 you know like uh, you know like clear about these questions and with the presence of mind i'm sure you would have marked them correctly one by one by one we are adding our you know you know marks so that we reach 150 target over there now one more question over there the the last one out of the ENT about the inverted papilloma of the nose. And you know what? The, they, they gave a history that the mass was rising from the lateral part of the nose also. Some people say that. It's okay. Fine. But they asked, what is true? If you remember your class notes, the ringlet's tumor, also called inverted papilloma of the nose. It arises from lateral wall of the nose. It's a locally invasive tumor. It's a locally invasive tumor. So, Papilloma is a benign tumor. Inverted papilloma is a benign tumor, but it is a locally invasive tumor. Locally invasive tumor. And it's not a cancer, but it can convert to cancer. So it cannot be A, it cannot be D. Okay. It's a benign tumor, but as we discussed in the class also, look at your notes also over there. It's a locally invasive tumor. Okay. So guys, these were the questions which were asked in ENT in the FMG session of January 2023 and I'm, I'm truly you know uh, glad that you know a lot of students who have written you know uh, in the email or the telegram groups and all that they have scored many out of them and I'm really happy that that you could utilize your you know you know hard work to convert that to marks and you know if you look at these you know 19 questions you know right from angiofibroma to glomus jugulae to utricle facule and to the coin esophagus story, external nasal anatomy, you know, Bell's palsy story, and uh, you know, everything what you have really discussed in the class, and that has been asked to you. So I am I'm very, very sure about this thing that FMGs would have really, really, you know, played the game well on the exam day, as we always said that, and just scored maximum out of these questions. Best wishes for the results and all the prayers of each and every faculty member. May you pass the examination and may you meet us on the other side of the show. Thank you very much.